What, what, what do you feel like these uh, panel shows like The Five bring to the analysis of the news? Uh, John, I'm sorry, please don't compare The Five to other panel shows, okay? The Five is so much more than just a panel show. It's life itself. It is everything. How are they different from a panel show? They, they seem like... John, perhaps you're unacquainted with my one-woman show inspired by The Five. I shall now perform it for you. I, I don't... I'd actually, I don't, I don't think we have five panels. Easy, little John. Mama's in control now. John, the five is the storyboard of the human condition. And I know this because I'm Samantha Bee, and I watch the five. The truth about the five is that it's a story as old as time. A story of love. <laughs> One that rivals the works of a Shakespeare or a, a Nicholas Sparks. This, this story of love <laughs> is rooted in that deepest human emotion. Riding the boner train to pound town. <laughs> it's the tale of a winsome blonde ingenue, Dana Perino, a young girl new to the big city, with big dreams and a heart so pure, she makes Mary Poppins look like a disgusting whore bag. I am in bed asleep by 10.30. I'm definitely awake by 6.30. There is a certain word that rhymes with truck. Should the detainees be given the E word in the first place? We're going to discuss next time. E Erotica? E I can't say that. The reason would... they don't start families is because they feel like they don't, they're not financially secure enough Thank to start you. a family yet. And it's not that they're not having it's... SEX. <gasps> she can't say SEX. She's not a <laughs> word. <laughs> falls for a good girl harder than a bad boy. <laughs> and no boy was better than the rebellious Greg Gutfeld. I was on Percocet for seven days. Best week of my life. I'm Six drunk now. Like I've been drinking since two. I gave three people hepatitis. <laughs> a pill-popping afternoon drunk who's riddled with hepatitis? <gasps> There's got to be a catch. <laughs> Greg and Dana were total opposites. They should never have even been seated together. But once they were, psh, electric. These beautiful flowers. Of your face. And I wanted to give them to Greg. It's a photo rose. You could have this in your office. Wait, Greg was very chivalrous and gave me his jacket in the break. Oh, How geez. do I laugh at anything you say? <laughs> that is this One last I'm question real. to Greg. Is pot an aphrodisiac? <laughs> Why okay. did you do that to me? <laughs> How do you have that power? I know. Is it? <laughs> oh, you. Oh, you. <laughs> of course, a girl like Dana, she's not going to have just one suitor. It's a game of high stakes international chess, so I put together a big old chess board right here. Can camera two take this? Because this is what you agreed to wear. We fivers want to take you through how we're dealing with the flu. I have to do this. Oh, what is that? Yes. Is that ketchup? Really, Eric Bowling? Prop comedy? That's not going to work on Dana. This isn't 1980, and you ain't no Gallagher. <laughs> Besides, Greg and Dana's love couldn't be denied. Not that others didn't try to pull them apart. <laughs> Which brings us to our story's villain. A man with a soul so dark, he couldn't abide Greg and Dana's happiness. He knew exposing their secret love would be a scandal the likes of which the world had never seen. <laughs> and on the day the five were outside grilling meat, that's just what Bob Beckel did. 
If we put Gutfeld on here, we could have grilled gut. Now, what's that'll be the best meat you ever uh, had. I, I, I'm sure <laughs> it would be. That's what Dana tells me. Uh, is that is it? <laughs> Mistake, Bob. How about I take those suspenders and hang you by your balls? <laughs> but none of it mattered. <laughs> All was empty. Meaningless, because it turned out Greg and Dana had worse problems than scum Bob big pants. I want to wish a happy ninth anniversary to my wife, Elena. <laughs> You could have mentioned in the three years you've been sitting next to Dana, you two-timing monster, letting Dana, precious Dana, fall in love with you while you were just gallivanting around your stupid studio, laughing it up with your secret wife and your dick pills. You know what? All the while breaking her heart, you broke So, uh, what, what's your take on the view? Do you have? Oh, you know what? It's good. It's good in the background when you're vacuuming or whatever. Okay, yeah. Sam, Sam Beef, everybody. Thank you, Sam Beef. Men, from time immemorial, they stood atop the world, building our civilizations, commanding our armies. They were gods walking among us, but now their time may be over. For the first time, women are expected to outnumber men in the workforce. A new study finds increasing numbers of women outpacing their husbands when it comes to income and education. And it's a crisis that troubles many, like sociologist and author of The Myth of Male Power, Dr. Warren Farrell. It's a difficult time to be a man in America. In what sense exactly? Men today are probably where women were in the late 50s. We're about a half century behind women in terms of being understood in terms of um, having options. How did this happen, baby cakes? We did a great job for women. We now just need to do the same for men. He's right. Men run just 485 of our Fortune 500 companies and only three branches of government. And there are more doors closing on them all the time. Almost all your pharmaceutical um, salespeople are young women and attractive women <clears throat> because the pharmaceutical company knows that an attractive young female will be, have much greater access to a medical doctor who's on, the, on average still more likely to be a male. Oh, that sucks for men, except for the male doctor who gets to earn all that money and bang that hot new sales rep. <laughs> Poor guy. It doesn't stop there. Even the nightly news, long a bastion of the stately white male, is now 66.7% female and the last male anchor is kind of effeminate. Fortunately, help is on the way, thanks to male support groups like the Better Man Organization. Founder Wayne Levine. For us, it's, it's about being available to each other and giving the wisdom and the guidance and the support and the ass kicking, whatever it is we need, to be the best men we can be. You know, the, so many of the problems that we face uh, in our culture is because men are not getting what they need. What are men not getting? Well. Um, in our culture, there's no place for men to gather. It's you know, socially unacceptable for men to get together. Yes, it's a constant struggle to find places where men are allowed to be themselves. Having never heard of Las Vegas, these disenfranchised men seek solace in the woods, where they play games no one liked in PE class. My wife is in charge. And complain about oh. their wives. Mostly what they do is gather in circles, the sitting circle, the cleansing circle, and of course, the most important circle of all. So what we got here is a wisdom circle okay. with uh, 
just a few men. Yeah. And this is where a man will bring an issue that needs to be addressed. When does everybody start masturbating? They were coming here with one purpose, to reclaim their manhood. Hey, our dinner's right over here. What are you waiting for? Do I have to do this by myself? Sadly, the inequalities holding men back begin as early as high school. Almost every high school has a football team. Almost every football team has cheerleaders. And it's very rare that the cheerleader says something like, gee, you know, I noticed you lost your position on the team, so I'd like to continue cheering for, um, for, for you because you were very sensitive and very loving and very caring and very listening. You don't ever see that happening. So we need to give our sons permission to be pusswads. That's, yes, so, some type of term like that. Something puss-related. And of course, the key to uplifting any oppressed group is to give them a voice. This is the time of day where we uh, bring out the talking stick. It's a time where you can uh, speak from the heart and listen from the heart and share whatever's on your mind. Finally, it was my opportunity to offer advice to my fallen brothers. Actually, you know, I actually brought my own tool. Attention, middle-aged vagina men. Sack the f up. Seriously. You're turning me into a lesbian. These days, when you hear about secession, you think of Texas. But Texas isn't alone. Secession is the big word for lawmakers in Long Island. Should Long Island become its own state? According to Long Island legislator Edward Romaine, the time for independence is now. Yes, the 51st state, Long Island. Long Island is paying more than $3 billion more than we're getting back in assistance from the state. Located just 10 miles from Manhattan, or three and a half hours by car, Long Island's three million people have never felt connected to the rest of the state. Well, we're kind of an appendage to New York. Mm. So we, we jut out uh, east of New York into the Atlantic Ocean. How much longer can New York State continue to jerk this appendage off before it just explodes? Not much longer. We're going to secede if we can. We're going to stand up and say enough is enough. Unfortunately, some people, like Long Island State Senator Carl Marcelino, insist on standing in the way of statehood. No, Long Island should not secede uh, from the state of New York. You're a state senator from Long Island. I mean, if this secession happens, you could be a real senator. Senator Marcelino from the great state of Long Island. It's just not practical to do it. But can they afford not to do it? The high taxes are forcing some people to vote with their feet. That is, the best and the brightest are leaving Long Island. It's all relative, though. I mean, you are talking about the best and brightest of Long Island. Uh, the most important resource that we have are our people. They're inventive. They're mm. intelligent. Jager Bob! Yeah! Yeah! And these intelligent and inventive people think it's time. I'd most definitely like to see Long Island seceded as its own state. We're a totally different group of people. <laughs> Long Island, it's a melting pot. You got all these awesome uh, Italian guys, mm -hmm. beautiful Italian women, nice mm -hmm. Italian food. You're not making it seem like a melting pot, unless you're talking about a melting pot filled with bubbling marinara sauce. What do you have to say to New Yorkers who say, good riddance? I say, you. You guys still got the village. Good luck with that one. Clearly, the first article of their state constitution is in place, but have they really thought things through? It's complicated. We would need to pay for the roads that are state roads. The first thing we do is pick a state capital. We would need to pay for the state parks that are state parks. Picking a, a, a state food, it might be, uh, it might be the flounder. Uh, teacher certifications would all have to be done differently. Picking a state bird, it might be the seagull. The uh, state bird should just be flipping the birds. All right. Welcome to Long Island. <laughs> of course, secession could mean war, and that's something no one would want to see. Dearest Gina, with dangerously low on Axe body spray, and those suckers from Massapequa took all my free weights. By the way, that picture you took of me and my rim, it's f***ing sick. Give my love to your family, except your sister, she's a whore. 
Long Island's packing some serious balls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go. We can beat up any other state you got. What state make. could you beat up? And please don't say Rhode Island or Connecticut because everybody knows those states are pussy states. You name it. What do you got? Wyoming? Iowa? What do you think? Say Ireland. I don't think that counts. Oh, states. I'm sorry. Other states. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like a retard now. Other states not in Europe. Staten Island. Other states. Uh, Canada. Canada. Okay, we have. Okay. Europe, right? Okay, I'm sorry. New Jersey. Oh yeah, New Jersey's the first to go. Isn't that like beating up your conjoined twin, though? They're so genetically similar. The people of Long Island have been oppressed for too long, and after spending time in their world and learning their customs, I started to share in the revolutionary spirit. First of all, I think they should call it Strong Island if they make it its own state. I mean, look at these guys. It's the gun show, baby. You got your tickets? Ooh, double guns. Yeah. Makes me feel so vulnerable. <laughs> Not really sure I'm capable of making good decisions right now. Probably all that birth control I'm taking. It's making my mind fuzzy. I was drawn in by their noble cause and meticulous manscaping. Pow, 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 pow. On second thought, you know what? No. I'm confused. The whole thing, the whole thing has me very confused. Rick Santorum says women can't be in combat because they'll trigger men's chivalrous nature. Mm -hmm. Liz Trotta says female soldiers can't serve because they'll arouse men's uh, baser instincts. Yes. What, what, what's your take? Well, John, I know you're expecting an apology, and believe me, you'll get it. it from, from you, an apology for mm -hmm. what, Sam? John, for this. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys can rape it or you can protect it, but you can't ignore it. It's who you are. You know, you're, you're, you're talking about this and the, the, the sexual assaults and things like that. Like, it's a bad habit that men have. Like, oh, men always leave their socks on the floor. Or, men can't put the toilet seat down. You know? <laughs> oh, my God, I know. Don't you hate it when guys do that? When they rape <laughs> ladies, am I right? What's up? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so female soldiers should just expect to be sexually assaulted, is that? Well, female soldiers, gal reporters, lady doctors, <laughs> teacherettes, aviatrixes, that's just the way it is when you're a woman intruding in a man's world. We expect to be paid slightly less and raped slightly more. You know, but as a, you know, I'm a, as a man, I'm offended. Men are absolutely capable of working in close quarters with women in an appropriate, respectful manner. Uh, it, it's... John, I'm up here. <laughs> I'm looking up there. I, I'm oh talking my God, to you. You know what? You're right. You're absolutely right. It's my fault. You don't bring the fruit if you don't want it to get picked. <sighs> you know, no. see, here's the problem with that. Not every man is in a constant battle to suppress urges to pick fruit that does not want to be picked by them. Oh, it's not. So, someone hates women. I don't hate women. I don't. Okay, it's just... just like feminists hate men by assuming that they could be something other than prehistoric rape machines. <laughs> Which, coincidentally, is the name of my all girl punk band. <laughs> We're going to be at the Roxy this weekend. And fellas, as always, ladies, drink free if you catch my drift. <laughs> Two for one, roofie teenies. Come on down, protect us, rape us. It's your choice. Two choices. Two choices only.